Hello everyone, it's been a while since I've made a video with the exception of the last one, the sneak peek of the motor controller I built. Uh, today I want to go over that in detail, but before I get to that I want to kind of fill in the gaps of what I've been doing between January and now. I finished up the sonic energy harvesting experiments. Uh, I left them kind of unfinished because my mind, they they showed promise but that's really not what I was after I, I was uh, ultimately after the, the high voltage discharge experiment that I want to perform with the motor so having said that I, I started looking around and I found some software that I could uh, control the pulse width and pulse delay of a motor it was Arduino based software I had approached the author of the software and he didn't think that it would work. Well, I, that didn't discourage me all that much because I didn't have much to work with to begin with. So I went ahead and got myself an Arduino and I uh, got it all set up and just about right out of the gate I hit 90,000 RPM with that controller. Now, that's when I thought I could make things better. Well, it, it didn't work out so well. I never really reproduced the 90,000 RPM. The closest I got was hitting a uh, little over 80,000 RPM a couple of times. And then I settled into just trying to figure out how the software was working and how I could uh, possibly automate the delay so that I wouldn't have to manually uh, use a keyboard to uh, control the delay as you increase your pulse width or decrease your pulse width your delay needs to change too so I, I worked on that I was working on automating that and things were going well then I got a little careless and I totally smoked my coil I mean it was unrepairable the video that I made uh, about a catastrophic failure uh, looked like a day in the park compared to uh, what you see here in the picture uh, it it looked like a volcano going off when I finally discovered that it was uh, burning up and it was negligence on my part and that really set me back in a big way uh, I really didn't work on it for about a month after that because I was so discouraged and I finally got back into it and I started using my backup coil which is of lesser quality it doesn't perform perform as well uh, the max speed I've ever gotten out of it is about a little over 60,000 RPM and the current draws a lot higher so at some point I'm, I'm just going to have to uh, bite the bullet and try and make myself uh, another real quality coil to replace that original uh, probably try and make two of them because I, I really wanted to have two coils on this motor and uh, use an H bridge and be able to control direction and uh, get more torque out of it but as it turned out I blew well I didn't blow it up I burn it up uh, burn up that coil so that left me with the backup coil uh, it allowed me to play around with the software more and I it got real familiar with the software I'm still not an expert on it so don't bother approaching me on, on the subject I'll leave a link down below where I got the software and it's up to you what you do with it but I have made a couple of additions to the software I'm not a programmer. I muddled my way through it. I have done programming in the past. I've, I've done assembly, visual basic, etc. But I've, I've never really a, been a programmer per se. Just get my way by through it. Um, but I did get the automatic delay to work. It works rather well. Um, and I also added uh, support for a serial display um, but I'll go over that a little bit later
before I do that, I want to give you a little dog and pony show of the controller here through a few slides of uh, some photos that I, I made. Um, here you see the top side full view of the controller, keypad, display, uh, selector switch, and uh, that selector switch there is to uh, use to select uh, which voltage you want to monitor in the controller. It's got a main input that will support from uh, 13 to 50 volts and then inside it's got a couple of regulators so you can uh, select the voltage you want to monitor there there's a close-up of it and then on the side there you can see you have your on off switch and uh, your power input of course 13 to 50 volts and a fuse of course and then you have a fan on off I have that running off 12 volts right now and it's a current hog I, I can get away with running it on 5 volts uh, but it's a necessary evil really if you're running at uh, some higher currents and if you're running more than one uh, CMOS power, power MOSFET driver um, then of course you see the USB input uh, for the Arduino and the power jack for the Arduino which isn't really needed um, but I have access to it if I decide for some reason to to use it and then there's a selector switch there on the side for programming the Arduino um, but as it turns out that isn't needed either so it's kinda just there it's not really used. Um, then the bottom side, of course, I, I have the fan exhaust, and on the other side, I've got a connector there uh, that's used for connecting and disconnecting the cable for the driver coil and the hall sensor and the cap output. Um, then on the inside, you have the top panel here you can see the display serial display and the DVM and the selector switch and just a little bit closer view of those individually then we get to the inside where we see that I built a little proto board um, that is the interface between the Arduino and uh, the outside world and you see the jack the input output jack for the box what it looks like it's just an ATX power supply connector and of course you have the heat sink there that the power MOSFETs will mount to currently only using one but there's space for another one if I want to drive another coil if I want to drive them in parallel um, so I can mount two of them and you have a 5 volt su supply there DC to DC converter um, I think it will accept uh, anywhere from like 6 volts to 50 volts, something like that. They just cost a couple bucks a piece. Um, and then, of course, you have the 12 volt DC to DC converter, and that'll accept, say, 15 or 13 volts to 50 volts. Power switch, and the fuse. That brings me to the operation. Uh, we'll break away from this and I'll start in on a, a live demonstration of the 
operation of the controller. Before I do that though, I, I do want to touch on the display. Only because uh, of all the help that the creator, the designer of the display gave me. I went to the Arduino forums to get some help on uh, you know, choosing a product to uh, use as a display and keypad um, and uh, I was pointed to Dr. Lou. Dr. Lou was a lot of help and I'm going to give links to his uh, products and his uh, blog down below as well as the Arduino forum. Uh, he was really really helpful so if you're looking for a display for your Arduino uh, he designed and manufactures serial displays called Phi. I think he has uh, uh, several different versions of it <clears throat> and he was so helpful so I'm uh, very grateful to him for all the help that he gave me um, I'm using his 20 by 4 Phi backpack and again I will leave the links down below um, but one thing about the display it works great and uh, the keypad uh, connects directly to the the Phi display and all that works great so wonderful product a lot of help he's very supportive so go ahead and support him he'll help you and uh, that he also has a YouTube channel. I'll leave that link down below too. I'm really not going to get into the specs of all, all these different products, but um, as you see, I have a few photos of, of uh, his products that I snagged off his website. So support him, he, he'll help you out. And uh, the other thing I want to do is give props to the author of the software that I'm using. I mean, unbelievable software I mean I'm not a programmer like I said but um, it, it from what I been told and what I've seen and experienced uh, the software is great and he gave it willingly and freely to the world to use so uh, I, I don't know what else to say about that except for you know thank you and I'm not gonna give his name uh, because I don't know that he really wants to support the software although his, his uh, handle is in the software it's listed in there along with uh, another YouTube user that um, actually the, he's the one that I, I got it from and I'll, I'll put a little uh, link to his channel too um, I'm not going to link to the author's channel because I, I don't know that he really wants to to support the software. And I can't blame him. He, he gave it freely and if you don't know enough to use it then I guess you shouldn't be using it. And that's pretty much the spot I was in at the outset and I tried to ask a couple questions. I got one answer and the answer was it probably won't work for me but uh, surprise surprise it does work. Um, it's well written and uh, of course it's going to have its limitations because of the speed of the Arduino. Um, I am you know, at 90,000 RPM, um, that's 1500 hertz that it's able to process. And it'll process more than that, but there's going to be uh, drops, you know, signal loss, because uh, uh, just the limitations of the Arduino and its process, processing speed. So, uh, lots of uh, uh, gratitude there. For for both of those people, the author of the software and, and Dr. Lou. So uh, now I'm going to get on to the demo of the software. Okay, here I'm going to demonstrate the operation of the menu. First turn it on, it'll initialize. Come up to this little splash screen, press any key to continue, and you get your default. Uh, uh, duration at 15% and delay is at 17.5. It's automatically in the uh, 
automatic delay mode comes up by default so you see your RPM up there and I can uh, demonstrate how the RPM changes on the screen by adjusting the function generator take it up to about a 200 Hertz signal trying to tune that in now there we go about 200 Hertz a little over 200 Hertz so the uh, tachometer feature works pretty well it only updates every three seconds uh, so it doesn't burden the processor too much so if I want to change the duration I press number one takes you to the duration screen and and the keys are numbered next to each one of the uh, different percentages you can take it up uh, 0.1 percent point or 1 percent 10 percent up or down so it displays it on the screen up there if I if I say increase it by 10 percent you see our delay is down to 2.5 percent because the automatic delay kicked in so I'm going to go ahead and take that down and now it's at 7.5 percent the automatic delay now it's at 17 and a half percent again take it down to five percent and go back and you can go to your delay menu and you can uh, adjust your delay manually or first you'd have to turn off your automatic delay and then you have the same features changing the delay you can go down 10 percent down one percent down point one percent and the same for go up ten percent one percent and point one percent so hopefully that's clear enough on the screen maybe that's a little bit clear I'll turn auto delay on with number seven I'll go back and we see that the automatic delay kicked it into 22.5 percent on its own there after turning that back on so duration up 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 down 10 percent down 1 percent down 0.1 percent back to the main menu and of course I have the start if I hit start Okay, notice, notice uh, on the scope, the blue trace is at the bottom. It's dead. I'm going to hit the start, number three, and there we go. There's our 5% signal with 22.5% delay. Okay, here's a demo of the jitter of the output signal from the Arduino. Uh, you see that it's set at 50 microseconds per division, so that jitter's probably about uh, 40 microseconds. And experience that uh, at all speeds. That is all input frequencies that I've measured. Um, right now we're only uh, at 627 Hertz sorry for that bad shot there but I'm not going to take the time to focus that in um, so that's what I want to demonstrate here okay here I have a 812 Hertz signal uh, going into the system um, it really shouldn't matter what uh, the frequency is going in. Uh, the point here is the processing delay. Um, we're set up at 50 microseconds uh, per division here and there's three 
and uh, well, we'll just call it 150 microsecond processing delay. Now the yellow trace is the input signal and the blue trace is the output signal and uh, they are inverted because of uh, the place I'm looking, I'm looking at the uh, gate of the power MOSFET so they're inverted. The yellow trace is simulating the hall uh, input signal to the processor. So uh, 150 second, 150 microsecond delay uh, processing, and that includes the uh, opto isolators in and out of the uh, circuit, and uh, that this really doesn't take into account the the switching of the power MOSFET, but that's going to be negligible. Um, so there's the biggest delay is the processing. That's it for this. All right, this is a combo demo. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate the auto delay correction function, the software, and I'm going to demonstrate uh, the pulse duration, how I can uh, change that, and also the delay manually. So right now I'm set at 2% delay. Um, the scope is set up at uh, 5 microseconds, uh, 10 volts per division, and the yellow trace is the input signal and the blue trace is the output signal. And the output, as I said, was at uh, 2 percent uh, pulse duration. I'm going to go ahead and increase that and with the auto correction on, notice how the um, signal stays pretty much centered between the pulses. Again, the signal is inverted, so um, this is the correct output I want. But I'm just incrementing it one uh, percent at a time. I'm at 31, 32, 33, um, actually 39, 40. So I'll take it up to 50 percent pulse duration okay so there we are and it, and it stays centered pretty well it's with the auto uh, delay on um, now I can go ahead and turn that off and the auto delay is set at 0% now um, I'm going to manually change the delay so I'll turn the auto delay off and it stays centered because it keeps the same uh, percentage that the auto had. Now I can adjust it up or down. I'm going to adjust it up uh, 10%. So I'm at 30% uh, now. You can do that singly or 0.1. You can't really discern the 0.1%. So I'm at 36.6. I can go ahead and decrease that one at a time. I'm at 20% right now. I'm going to take it down to 10% with touch of one button. Okay, there's 10%, and I can further decrease that until I'm down to zero. So that's a pretty nice feature to be able to correct that manually or have the auto delay on because that feature works pretty well. It's uh, unproven though um, at high speeds, I must say. I've taken it up to 25,000 uh, RPM with that and it worked like a charm. So, uh, I'll take that back. Okay, so I'm at uh, 4600 RPM right now. Um, but it works uh, pretty well up to, like I said, uh, 25,000 RPM, which is equivalent to uh, Uh, 416 Hertz um, input signal so that's a pretty nice feature to have the auto delay this is a demo of the motor running uh, the blue trace is uh, at the bottom of the coil where it connects to the power MOSFET and the yellow trace is the all 
sensor output. Uh, you notice that the coil is being fired right in the middle of the downside of the, the hall. Um, and I can demonstrate increasing the duration. I'm not going to do it too much because it will get too loud. Hopefully this comes through clear as it is. Uh, so I'm going to increase it 1% at a time. And you should notice You can increase it to 10%, a 10% jump now, and you'll notice that. There we go. I'm going to take it back down. You notice how it stays in the center there because of the automatic delay. If I had that turned off, it'd be jumping around. So the automatic delay adjusted itself to 19.5% right now. I'm going to turn the duration up a little bit. We're at 2800 RPM right now. The scope's set at uh, one millisecond per division. And they're both, uh, well, channel one set at one volt, that's times one, and then channel two is times ten at one volt. And that That, that uh, inductive collapse is that spike right there. You see it goes off the chart. I, I'm getting uh, a thousand, over a thousand volts, around 1,200 volts across the recovery capacitors I have set up. Let's see if I can get that on screen. There they are. <laughs> Those three right there, they, they, uh, they're rated at 500, so I'm pushing them uh, about 400 volts a piece, over 400 volts a piece. Uh, so, yeah, this thing uh, puts out quite a spike when that magnetic field collapses. There you have it. One last thing about the, the software. Um, when you press start, the number three changes to stop. So let's, let's stop it. I'm going to power down now. Thanks for watching.